Liebman. I teach in the English department and in Humanities 110. I am going to show you a couple of quick tips for how to set up your computer when you're Zooming with your students at home so that you don't look like these pictures that have been circulating around the internet, which at least for me, like, makes me totally paranoid that I'm going to, like, show up like a little code head or way over the side or I'm going to be down low or I'm not going to be lit, etc., etc., etc. So I'm going to give you six tips for what to do in order to help make your Zoom experience a little less awkward the first time you get together with your students. So my first tip is really simple, which is notice that I've cleared off my desktop. So I still have a few things over here that are, you know, my receipts, my outstanding requests, my books that I'm working on, yay, which is due the end of this month. So um, those are the things that I kind of want on my desktop because I use them all the time, but I got rid of all my pictures of my dog, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that my students don't really need to use. Second tip is notice that I'm actually looking at you pretty consistently as I'm talking, as opposed to like looking over here or something weird going on, which is honestly what happens a lot in my office if I'm not careful, because in my office I've got a big screen and I tend to look at that instead of at my laptop. But the trick that I've done so that it looks like I'm actually looking at you is I've put that little image of myself up at the top of the screen near where the video is recording. So I'm much more naturally gonna look at myself as I'm talking because I'm a human being. And so by putting it at that position, I do this when I'm doing Skype calls for interviews as well, that I'm much more naturally gonna be looking like I'm engaging with you as opposed to off in some weird la la land or like the boomer that my students think that I am, though technically I'm not. Okay, so second tip was put your image of yourself near the top so that you look at the right place. My third trick that I'm using here is that I'm actually relying on where I place myself in my house based on lighting. So I have two sources, actually three sources of lighting here. When I position myself in a corner of a room where I've got windows on either side, so I've got lots of natural lighting, plus I actually have an overhead light as well. And that's creating a pretty natural amount of light so that I don't look, um, you know, I don't look like I'm in a studio, obviously. But that's not my goal here. I'm not trying to be a professional videographer. I'm just trying not to be like so dark that my students are like, what in the hell is she doing? So again, third thing, if you can find a place that has natural light, and notice if you can see, it's actually snowing outside. It's not very nice right now, like signs of the apocalypse. It's snowing in late March in or middle, early March in Oregon. Uh, but I've got both natural light and, and uh, regular lights so that I have plenty of light sources and I'm not in the dark. So that was my third tip. I really thought a fair amount about where I was going to sit in my house. Frankly, it would have been more comfortable to sit over on my couch and my dog would have appreciated that. But um, on my couch, it's really kind of hard to see me because there's kind of too much light or too little light depending on the time of day. But also I wanted some of my bookshelves, but not like so many bookshelves. So I took the corner of my dining room. There was a nice table for sitting my laptop on. And then I actually thought about what I was putting on the bookshelf, maybe more than you need to. Ones that are normally on here, so you can see like I have our doors and stuff like that. But I actually put some of the things that are there um, that are my workbook, so it doesn't look quite as much just like a Jewish kitchen. And I put a few Easter eggs for my students. I own pugs, so like here's my little pug salt shaker that they can try and find. And also, I position myself near our, um, thanks to my parents, shout out, my pug uh, cuckoo clock. So if things on time, they'll actually see the little pug jump out, which I assume will be sort of fun for them. Who knows? You know, I'm not saying you need to run out and buy a cuckoo clock, but again, it was already in my freaking house, so like, why not use it? as a little incentive and sort of amusing that they'll see something without being utterly distracting. It only goes off once an hour. In any case, so I was trying to be thoughtful about it. And notice I didn't position it like this because whatever, that bugs me. And um, so I'm trying to make it so that there are not as many competing things in the frame. I'm sure somebody who was totally into videos could make this better, but minimal amounts of staging helpful. 
So that's the fourth thing that I was paying attention to is what's going on in the background so that it says professional, but actually sort of entertaining at the same time. The fifth thing that I thought about was what is the height that my computer's at? Because you'll notice over here that the different animals, like the poor little gecko, he's way down at the bottom of his screen. There are a lot of things you can do to make yourself appear at the proper place in the screen. Um, when I first put this computer on this table, the table was a little too low. So I'll show you what it looked like originally. It originally looked like this. And I was like, what the heck? Why am I like the fish over there filling up the whole of the screen? And it's just like awkward. And frankly, I look fatter than necessary. So I think. In any case, uh, so my initial thought was like, well, I could just tilt up my screen. But then all my staging goes to hell, and now I look like the gecko, and I see the ugly stuff on the top of the thing, whatever. Easier solution is to put a couple of large coffee table books. Thank you, Stan Mervis, for donating this book. I, didn't, I bought it. But uh, so I put a couple of large coffee table books, and then again, I can sort of position myself correctly. Uh, I was trying to get rid of that stuff up there. And then I got sort of a normal, more, I'm actually still a little bit high, probably could remove one of the coffee table books. But um, I'm more in that middle quadrant of the screen, which frankly is more natural to divide the screen into thirds and have yourself be in the third. If I was trying to be like super high production, I would also position myself a little bit more over to the side so I wasn't in the middle third. I'm not that high production, so I'm going to go with the middle of the screen. Whatever. Using some coffee table books can help me make it look so that I'm actually more naturally in line with where the video recording is going on. And you can put some up or down. It keeps it pretty stable and I can still type if I need to, but at least I'm sort of looking not out of shape like the poor little hamster down in the corner. Okay, so that was my fifth tip. Oh gosh, look, I'm getting messages from Matthew Packwood. Apparently I didn't close my some of my things. That will be the next thing that we're going to show you how to do. Okay, so uh, touching face. Thank God I'm at home. Oh, hide in the computer. The sixth tip that I have appropriately just came up naturally because of the things happen. So first of all, probably I want to go and close out my Thunderbird. So which is my, um, let's see if I can quit that without everybody having to see it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so that I'm not getting those. Firefox, you'll notice it was giving me some things. You can see I've got my Zoom going on. What I want to do is actually go to Firefox and go to Preferences. Let's show you what the first screen that comes up. And then go to Privacy. And then if I scroll down, you'll notice that one of the things is Notifications, Settings. And then I've gone in, everything, but something was popping up anyway. So blocking it so that I don't get the little screens like it's your third cousin's, no offense to my third cousin, I love them very much, your third cousin's birthday on Facebook, coming in in the middle of class. We've all had that happen. We used our laptop in lecture. So this just allows you to typically have more control over what's popping up. So again, closing down some of those other windows would help too but having the notifications set to block all those requests and those pop-ups would be helpful. So notice that I've clicked block on every single thing. Honestly, who knows what most of these things are? I really don't need to be notified about them. So again, just to sum up, six things that I did in order to not look completely like I'm out of touch and not just sort of weird on Zoom. One, I cleared off my desktop. Two, I put my image up at the top. Three, I thought about lighting and use both external lighting and overhead lighting whenever it's possible. Fourth, I thought about the staging and where I was going to position myself in my house so it wasn't too distracting, but looked vaguely academic and yet not completely unfun. Uh, fifth, I thought about the height of my computer and raised up my laptop if need be. And sixth, I went and I checked my notifications and told them to block them so that they stop scrolling across my screen while I'm talking to my students. So thank you so much for coming and listening to this. You're going to see the clock rock. How awesome is that? So you can see why the students would want to turn in. Thank you for listening to, the, to this 
brief summary of ideas on how to set up for Zoom. Hope that you have lots of success and let me know what happens. Thanks. Bye.